Hi there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today. It's going to be a great show. Our guest is Dr. Steve Inslee from Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're going to talk about non-protein nitrogen today. Stay tuned. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Folks, welcome to the show. Steve, welcome to the Doc Talk set. Good to have you. Great to be here. I, I uh, always like the opportunity to talk about veterinary toxicology. It's not something that um, a lot of people know about, I guess, but it's, uh, it's very interesting to me. It's, uh, we get to do the CSI type things that <laughs> no, no, not other people get to do. So. <laughs> of all folks. This is Dr. Steve Inslee. He's the uh, section leader for veterinary toxicology at the Diagnostic Lab at Iowa State University. And today we're going to talk about non-protein nitrogen. And, and uh, you know, Steve, when we, we start to think about NPN, it's a good feed source, but it can cause some, some issues. So what are some of the more common sources of NPN that you're seeing fed? Usually, um uh, you know, we feed it. We feed NPN. Ruminants can utilize that. It's a cheap source of protein uh, if they have the energy to digest it. And uh, this year has been particularly uh, hard because we had such a long, cold, protracted winter that uh, you know feed costs are high. Uh, people are trying to look for ways to uh, you know decrease cost of rations so we we're using more NPN but we don't have the energy in there a lot of times to be able to metabolize that or it's uh, you know potentially mismixed and they get an, an, an increased dose and then they can't uh, you know they can't detoxify it quick enough to be able to utilize it properly and we've seen like urea <coughs> by your and, right. and some of those that are incorporated in the ration and you know we start looking at the cost of these cattle <laughs> the the cost feed costs and you know everybody's looking for a way to cheapen those rations up and we always tend to lean towards some of that NPN because it's so high in nitrogen um, and we get some of that cottonseed meal and distillers and some of those things out of the the rations right and so when they uh, when we when we feed NPN normally it's fine it's it's like a lot of the feed stuffs we have that can potentially be toxins it's it's the dose that's the issue and and when we can't control the dose correctly, that's, that's usually that's when we run into run into issues. Then, and uh, you know, kind of a, when I went to graduate school in ruminant nutrition, the rule of thumb was never more than one percent diet dry matter um, as as NPN. Right. So we try to. That's a good guideline. I mean, we we try to have not more than a third of the protein in the diet as NPN because then we'll approach those you know levels that we that we worry about with you know causing toxicity. So so. In the animal, then, what are some of the things that, that are that's going on? I mean, it's it's not being metabolized, so I assume it's passing to, across the rumen wall. Normally, what uh, if we have uh, urease is the enzyme in the rumen that digests the non-protein nitrogens, and when we get too much too much nitrogen source too fast, they'll uh, they'll metabolize that very quickly, produce a, ammonia in the rumen, and they can't utilize that quick enough, and they absorb that across the rumen wall, and that's what we see as a hyperammonemia in the bloodstream then and and uh, that's all all very acute you know when they consume the feed we're talking um, you know minutes to half an hour maybe we'll start to see clinical signs and death within an hour possibly even so well, I think that uh, leaves us a good time to go to break because then we come back we can talk about those those clinical signs and kind of get into some of the disease aspects of what people should be seeing. Sounds great. Thanks for being here. All right. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Steve Inslee here right after the break.
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are, whatever they do. It's just magic, that's all. It just, it just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Inslee from Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where he is the section leader for veterinary toxicology. And we're talking about NPN and during break we're talking a little bit about cases and you know, yeah, you're seeing some. Right, and unfortunately, it's it's more common than we than we like. It's a common feed stuff, and, and when we get mismix mismixing issue, that's that's the problem. And we've had a case, the most recent case, uh, cattle were on on uh, stock fields grazing. They had uh, liquid protein in the tubs, and uh, the tubs. You know, we had some issues with how well that was mixed. And then they also, in addition to that, they also got into got into a fertilizer uh, wheat uh, wheat seed mix that w had got been been uh, spread on the pasture and and uh, the owners thought that you know it was dispersed enough that it wasn't an issue but uh, cattle got into the were on the protein tubs and then got into the extra NPN in the in the fertilizer that was actually spread and so we had a uh, I think out of about 100 cows I think we lost 12 cows and had another 10 cows abort even from that wow. episode. So. so what are some of the things then with the <clears throat> clinical signs that, that somebody should be watching for for, for MPN toxicity or ammonia toxicity? Normally it's, uh, it's, it's going to be fairly acute after they get into the feed. So if you, feed, if, you, if you deliver feed and feed it that's been mismixed and you watch the animals, you'll see clinical signs within a half an hour to an hour. So the signs are very acute. Uh, the ammonia that they produce and absorb causes it affects the brain. They uh, they they uh, they they don't think straight. They they can act a lot like a 
um, a grass tetany type cow. They get abdominal pain, they salivate, uh, they can get very aggressive, uh, they, uh, you know, bloat fairly quickly, and uh, all this progression is, is, you know, very quick. You, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the things that can cause, you know, death loss within hours, and, and, and it's, it's uh, one of the things that the veterinary toxicologists we like to talk about, the urea toxicity is a lot like a battle at the Alamo. There were, there were no prisoners taken, and usually with urea toxicity, uh, it's, it's so acute and so rapid that, uh, you know, you have, if, you're, if you're going to try to treat, you've got to be, be quick and get, the, get your veterinarian out there very, you know, very soon so, we can, so you can have some success. Yeah, and, and uh, what about with, uh, you know, even some low levels? Um, you know the crazy calf syndrome. If you have calves that are suckling on cows, right. they they can get it from the milk as well, right? Right, right. The we see some ammonia from there, and we also we also have some issues with with uh, ammoniated hay that uh, we ammoniate for extra protein, and they they have they get a syndrome where it's bovine bonker, where the calves get this compound. It's a little different than the NPN ammonia. It's a it's a emetazoles get get uh, digested and into the milk of the cow and then the calves will act exactly like a cow does with NPN. And they'll, they'll be stargazers or uh, you know bovine bonkers is, is the common name that we call it because they'll, they'll, they'll get crazy and run into things and try to run over you too. <laughs> well, um, we're going to take a break. We have just a little time here before the break, but uh, bottom line is we got to get the veterinarian out right. quick. It's an acute toxicity, right. and uh, when we come back, we'll talk about some of the treatment, but probably more importantly, some of the prevention. Sure. Sounds You're good. watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. More with Dr. Steve Inslee from Iowa State University right after the break. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. David Seclosia is the operations manager of Animal Health and Welfare and staff veterinarian for Cattle Empire, one of the largest family-owned cattle feeding operations in the U.S. Over the years, Dr. Dave has championed the humane care and handling of cattle and is currently chair of the AABP Animal Welfare Committee. In 2013, AVC named him Consultant of the Year. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as we're gonna discuss beta agonists and beef production. Be sure to join me here every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on RFD-TV, and I'll see you down the road. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Inslee and Dr. Inslee is the section leader for veterinary toxicology at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and it's great to have you here, uh, K-State alumni. Oh, so, yeah. I, so. I graduated from K-State and Iowa State, so. Yep. 
So right. I did not graduate from K-State, but I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. But uh, we're going to talk about treatment. And, you know, when we left, you're saying you better, if you're going to treat, you better get on it. Yes, it's, it's uh, an acute toxicity, so it's an emergency situation. If you think that's what's going on, you need to contact your veterinarian. They need to, you know, drop everything and get out there. And the, the treatment for this, uh, this kind of a toxicosis is, is what I like to call my MacGyver treatment. It's, uh, we use vinegar, uh, household vinegar. And when we run out of vinegar, don't have any more of that, we use cold water. And basically what we're trying to do with both of those is change the chemistry in the room. And so we, these reactions occur at a very high pH. So at the, if an animal dies and your veterinarian wants to diagnose it, one of the things we do is pH the rumen. And the rumen pH should be seven or higher with a, with an, with a pneumonia toxicosis. So, we, so we, one of the things we treat with is this, the acetic acid or the vinegar. So we lower the pH of the rumen. We stop the urease enzyme's ability to metabolize the NPN that's in the rumen, and, and, and then the ammonia that's produced uh, will dissipate very quickly in the rumen. And we, uh, uh, the dose on, on the vinegar is a complicated dosing scheme that I tell, we talk about the students, <laughs> we say, you divide the amount of uh, uh, cows you have by the much, how much vinegar you have, and <laughs> that's how much we like to dose with. So it's, there's no way you can overdose, but we need, you need to have enough acetic acid you if all. you're going to, right, if you've, if you've Depends on how many animals, usually you're limited, you have more animals affected than you have vinegar to use. So, so we use as much vinegar as we can, try to, you know, half a gallon at least in the rumen and dilute it with water if we can. And then we, when we run out of vinegar, which we usually will, the, the second antidote that works very well, just cold water. Cold water will lower the rumen temperature down, the, that, that reaction takes place at about, optimally at about 102 degrees Fahrenheit, 103. And if we can lower the rumen temperature, uh, even a couple of degrees, that'll stop, effectively stop that reaction again, so. And the water can serve as an acid or a base and, right. you know, dilute that. Dilute, dilute out all the, the NPN in there and try to move it through quickly. But it's, again, it's a, it's a very fast toxicosis. The treatment's uh, quick and, and, and uh, it's, it's either going to work or not, so you don't, there's no, there's no delay time, so you either get in there and get the job done or you, or you don't, so. Well, it's a, it's a pretty simple treatment program, and uh, but it is pretty effective. It's very effective, yeah. It's our, it's our, uh, like I say, it's my, it's our MacGyver treatment. I like to call it because it, it's pretty simple. But if you, you know, identify correctly what the, what the cause is, you know, it's a very effective treatment, and and uh, you will save animals. It's just a time, you know, if you have enough, if you get there soon enough to treat the animals before they're too, too far. Uh, you know, too, the pr progression's too far, then you, you can have a good chance to reverse the effects of the NPN toxicosis. Cool. Well, let's take a break. <sighs> let's come back and we're going to talk about prevention and kind of wrap up. If anybody watched that segment, that was worth the price of admission right All there. All right. Okay. Appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after the break. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as we're going to discuss a topic that's been in the headlines of the beef industry for the last few months and that's beta agonists. We're going to talk about beta agonist usage, what they are, how they're used. We're going to talk about some of the things that are going on within the industry and some of the research that is very important to help us keep this type of technology. Be sure to join me every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on RFD TV and I'll see you down the road. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pasteurella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. We do use multi-man in our cow herd and we're finding that there is a benefit. Uh, seems like those cows breed back better and we also found that by giving our bulls 
uh, a shot of multi men before just before we turn them out we really get a kick out of that i've definitely recommended multi men to several people and uh, it's a good product hi i'm kevin auctioner host of ncba's cattleman to cattleman and colorado rancher join me each week as the national cattlemen's beef association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk, and my guest is Dr. Steve Inslee, who is the section leader for veterinary toxicology at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're talking about toxicology and NPN, or urea toxicity, in cows. We've seen a bunch of it uh, this year because of feed costs and cow costs and drought and all the different things that kind of, for a perfect storm, but uh, you know, like anything, we'd just soon prevent the problems from happening as as we would treat them. So right. what are some of your kind of rules of thumb or things to that nature? Well, the key in most instances is, is the dose. So if you, you know, if you can actually, if you've got a pound of protein and you're supposed to feed a pound of protein and, and, you, and the, the correct dose of urea is, go, is going to be in that, you need to make sure you can accurately dose that pound of protein to however many animals you have. If you if you can't uh, ensure that each animal gets the correct dose per head, then th those are cases that we usually see, you know, the mismixing occur. One animal will consume twice as much or four times as much as they should if you can't limit that dose correctly. You know, either with uh, corn or other feedstuffs, you know, we'll, we'll do that. And then liquid supplements, again, if they're designed to be uh, agitated before use, make, you know, be, be very careful that you can agitate, you know, the, the liquid supplements to get the get the protein distributed in there normally. Um, and then one, one uh, the third, particularly this winter, the third potential cause is, is when we, we have to haul water in the tank, protein or uh, polypropylene tanks that have been used to haul fertilizers. And if we don't get those cleaned out, we see some exposure just from the, uh, the, the NPN or the fertilizers that were left in those tanks uh, when we're trying to haul water. So between between those three scenarios, if you can uh, eliminate those, you know that that will usually uh, usually prevent any kind of an ammonia toxicosis issue. Amazed me on some of the studies that we've seen on lip <coughs> tanks and cows on their consumption. There's one cow in a study that they were seeing how much of the lick tank they ate versus how much stalks and things that, and the cow never left the lick tank. Right. She just sustained right. herself just all day on that molasses tank or that That's liquid true. feed tank, and so. Some of them don't touch them. Some of them overconsume, and that's true. That's a, that's a hard thing for me too. I have to watch that Pizza Hut buffet too. I'll, <laughs> I'll overconsume on that too. Yeah, Luckily, there's no NP in there. Yeah, so. exactly. It's all pretty much uh, natural protein source, right. some whey proteins, and and meat. But uh, I have the the same issue. But uh, thanks a million for being here today. Uh, and and sharing that with us on the on the show any parting comments on MPN? it's uh it's just it's, it's a common feed source we'll probably always have that and the key is just to watch the dose i mean if we can if you can be diligent and and ensure we the dose is always correct then we can uh, eliminate or reduce you know any any potential for toxicosis then sounds like winter and thank you for watching doc talk today and joining me with dr steve Inslee. remember Always work with your local veterinarian, and if you want to know more about what we do at DocTalk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine. Thanks for joining us on DocTalk today, and I'll see you down the road. 
Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com.